this radio show host in Philadelphia who said on air, he was like, listen, I think that a standing ovation on Friday for Trey Turner would go a long way. Like when he gets up to bat, let's cheer for him instead of booing him for the millionth time. Um, which is a very interesting approach. I don't know if I've ever heard about that kind of like grassroots effort to cheer for a player who's not doing well. I, I personally had not heard of something like that. So anyhow. Today we're going to chat about cheering for others and the impact that it can have on people around us. A term that you'll often hear in our conversation and in some of the other stuff you might see us write about is the phrase positive attention. Laura Sue, you were telling me something yesterday that I would love you to lead us out with. You were telling me a story that really was an awesome picture of what this can look like, this idea of positive attention. Would you start us off to share a little bit about that story? Yeah, I, as the resident sports fanatic around here, <laughs> I'm really excited to talk about uh, this story. I actually know next to nothing about sports, um, but this story grabbed my attention uh, last fall, and I love it so much, so I'm excited to talk about it. Okay, so there's this team called the Philadelphia Phillies, and last year they signed a contract with this player named Trey Turner. It's an 11 year contract for $300 million. Now I'm not, again, you know, the knower of all things when it comes to sports or baseball specifically, my, the closest I came was being a fan of the Sandlot. I just loved that movie so much, but that's like the extent of my expertise, right? Uh, Trey, I'm assuming should be a pretty strong player for that contract, you know, to be uh, offered to him. So uh, last summer he started to hit this horrible slump in his playing like he's brand new on this team he, you know <clears throat> signing this contract and then he is having a terrible slump in his play uh, someone was calling it like the worst 45 game stretch of his career which that's like a lot of not good feelings in a row it was to the point where he's getting booed at the games his stats had him trailing rookies which again i don't i can't break down the stats for you but this is what i learned in hearing about this story um and there were times uh last summer where like in post game interviews he was quoted as saying obviously i'm the reason we lost this game um in another interview he said if i had a magic wand to undo this contract i would like he he was doubting himself he was doubting his value it's this whole thing now uh, from what i understand the philadelphia phillies have a really passionate base of fans okay and um, they are really clear about their feelings, which is why he was getting booed at games. But there was this radio show host, okay, uh, leading up to um, a game in August of 2020. This radio show host in Philadelphia who said on air, he was like, listen, I think that a standing ovation on Friday for Trey Turner would go a long way. Like when he gets up to bat, let's cheer for him instead of <laughs> booing him <laughs> for the millionth time. Um, which is a very interesting approach. I don't know if I've ever heard about that kind of like grassroots effort to cheer for a player who's not doing well. I, I personally had not heard a story like that. So anyhow, the game on Friday, August 4th comes up. He steps up to the plate and the crowd starts going wild. They're standing up, they're cheering for him, and he hits a home run. Not just a home run for himself, but a three-run homer. It was, like, phenomenal. Uh, and then the next time he's at bat, another standing ovation. Okay, he went on to have a nine-game hitting streak. And um, there was, of course, lots of attention following this kind of turn in his performance. And so he was asked afterwards, uh, like, a few days or so after that particular game in August, he was asked about the ovation. Like, how did that impact your performance? And he talked about how the combination of the standing ovation and being able to relax in the box before going up to bat and then the concentration he was gifted in being able to like make some adjustments it helped him calm down feel better and essentially execute far better than he had been doing it seems like kind of a silly illustration in a way but obviously it had a huge impact in his effectiveness and in his performance right so i'm a big fan on cheering for people. Um, when I was teaching, uh, it was really important to me to cheer for the kids in my classroom, especially ones who maybe 
uh, weren't expected to perform as well. There was a teacher that I worked with at one point who her approach was to write down on the board all the failing grades that had happened on say like, like the last test that had occurred. And oh man, it just made me so sad when I would kind of catch one of that going on because I don't think that was effective for the kids in that classroom. I can't imagine coming to work and someone listing my failures on the board and then saying, we'll do better. I, I just can't imagine that being, you know, encouraging. So anyhow, how do, how do you think, like, when it comes to the workplace, how can we use positive attention? Um, and is, you know, is this something that you've actively practiced? And if so, how, how have you seen it used in the workplace? I've seen it almost in two different ways that have been really helpful. I'll start by talking about how I benefit from positive attention just in my own, mm -hmm. like, self-talk. Let me start there because, mm -hmm. you know, I... I, I know that I'm not abnormal in this sense, but I tend to remember the negative stuff more easily than the yeah. positive. And so years ago, uh, I don't remember where I got this idea, but years ago, I started to save, and you and I have talked a little bit about this, save mm -hmm. snippets of wins, celebrations in written form initially is where I started. But really what sped up this process for me was digitizing it. So I started using Dropbox, which you can use any kind of file storage, cloud storage kind of thing. But I started to save um, either little text files that were messages I received from somebody, or maybe I'd, if I got a handwritten note, I would take a picture of my phone and save it on my in, in this mm -hmm. folder. And I started to call this folder my greatest hits <laughs> because I knew I was, I was going to be just more naturally uh, inclined to think about or remember some of the negative experiences, the failures, the misses. And if I had an easy way to get back to my wins, that would be helpful for me. And so I have this folder now called Greatest Hits. I've had it for 12 or something years. I've got video files in it. I've got screenshots of conversations where somebody gave me some props or uh, some gratitude or something. Um, I even have in this same folder screenshots of stuff that I was not directly involved with, but... I know I had a role in equipping people who were involved, so whether it's clients giving feedback to team members. I wasn't on the project, but I, I kind of feel a sense of pride and, 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 and ownership in setting the stage for something like this to have happened. So I have this folder to help me think about the positive side of this stuff. But then in real time, I try to do this for myself in just sort of journaling. I mm -hmm. want to give myself sort of some of this positive attention because... If I'm not careful, I do fixate on the, the negative side. Mm -hmm. And part of that can be helpful because I like to grow. I like to develop. I like to reflect on where I fell short in something. But if I'm not careful, I get too fixated on that. So there's sort of the inward version of this. But really, outwardly, when our staff uh, at Focus Lab get together, we like to give each other positive attention and it's not in a way that's like this toxic false positivity where we're just ignoring yeah. bad stuff, but it's an intentional way to highlight the good in spite of the, the misses and in amidst the misses. And right. so we do this in public, but we also do it in like manager one-on-one -on -one settings. One of the ways that I think is really simple, anybody listening to this can do uh, in either a manager context or otherwise, there, there's two questions. There are two questions that we like to use in some um, kind of one-on-one -on -one style meetings. And we actually got this from a system called EOS. It stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System. Uh, here at Built on Purpose, we run on EOS. And my other agency, we run on EOS. And there's just two really simple questions that actually make us start with the positive attention side, which is, so what's working right now? And then you can talk about what's not working. And by starting with the what's working, we're intentionally paying some positive attention to something that is very real. It's, you're not making it up. You're not just fishing yeah. for stuff. You're pausing to reflect on what actually is good and working right now because we need to know what it is. You know, one of the things I really like from, uh, I think I heard this from Andy Stanley first. And he said, uh, I'm going to paraphrase because this has been years since I looked this up. Uh, something to the effect of, um, if you don't know why something works when it's working, you don't know how to fix it when it's broken. And so it's really important to know why things work in your business, how they work, what causes the good things to happen, how do you repeat those good things, and paying positive attention to this stuff is 
one way that you can kind of invest in knowing how things work well. So we do this in a group setting. We can do this in a one-on-one -on -one setting with just a manager and a direct report. Um, but there are some simple ways to really call attention to um, the good in what's going on. Now I mentioned that I know I'm, no, I'm not alone in this, that I can gravitate more towards the negative than the positive. I tend to uh, remember those things more readily and so I try to uh, combat that in a sense. So I know I'm not alone in that. And, you know, we've Last year I came across this book called The Happiness Advantage. I really, really enjoyed it. I shared it with you and we're actually kind of doing some stuff with it in Built on Purpose. So I wanted to toss it back to you, Laura, and, and um, bring up that Happiness Advantage book because some of the ideas we're talking about today um, are reinforced in that book, which includes yeah. references to research and things like that. So, so why don't you uh, keep us going here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this book... Um is is fantastic and one of the things that it talked about is this idea of the undoing effect which is going back to what we were mentioning with trey turner earlier essentially it's um saying that positive emotions provide a shift um and a, and a swift antidote to physical stress and anxiety so when trey's getting up to bat and people are giving him the standing ovation you know it helps to kind of like hit the reset button almost and those positive emotions reinforce um, the body's ability to let go of some of that stress that he clearly had really been holding on to for quite a while. So another thing that they talked about in the book um, that I, I thought was fun, I think we'd have to be creative to use this in a virtual setting, but I'm sure we could figure it out. Um, but an idea for people who are in a physical uh, office setting, um, they had like an elephant, I don't know if it was, I can't remember if it was like a plush item or like a s ceramic figurine, I'm not too clear on that, but this elephant um, would be gifted, anyone could get the elephant, and once you were gifted the elephant, it's because you did something right, you did something good, you know, um, that had a positive impact, and so, you know, if somebody's dropping by your office to say hey or ask a question and they spot the elephant, they're like, wait a minute, what did you do? And you get to kind of brag on yourself a little bit and explain what happened and how you got the elephant, and eventually, you know, you would spot the goodness in someone else and pass along the elephant to someone else. I just thought that was such a great practice and it's not even something that has to be necessarily brought up in a meeting but it is still a way to create this continuation of celebration and cheering each other on which I think was so great. You know you alluded to this a minute ago I do I do know that we all have a natural bent to the negative and so there I want to call this out I think there are some people who might hear this conversation and hear the phrase positive attention and feel almost like it has this um, air of you know everybody gets a trophy kind of mindset yeah so I want to be really careful here and say that we're not talking about using false praise um, to just hope for the best that maybe people's performance will somehow magically improve based on praise um you know there is a time and a place for very clear and constructive feedback we are fans of um, Brene Brown's approach to clear is kind right like we want to be kind and we want to be clear in our feedback in order to make improvements where improvements need to be made and I think that um we can run into trouble as leaders if all we're doing is pointing out where we see improvements need to be made. I think sometimes it's tempting, when, especially when we're experts in our field, you see the what seems so obvious to you about something that needs to improve or, or, or be better. And so you have to take a step back and remind yourself not to be hypercritical, but we want to be sure to take a moment to, to encourage others and call out when they are doing good and doing well. And uh, Another thing I want to point out is that if if your team members only receive what they would process as negative feedback, potentially, if that's all they're receiving from you, then they may not even trust the positive when it does come out. So there needs to be a, a balance there. All right. So uh, some research suggests that a healthy ratio if you're trying to figure out well how often do I need to you know give someone a high five and and, and praise and, and give some um, positive attention versus you know 
some feedback. The, the ratio seems to be a five to one. So five positive interactions for every negative, we'll say negative interaction. It doesn't necessarily have to be negative, but you know, it could be critical and, and constructive feedback. So uh, five to one ratio seems to be kind of the healthy balance there. Ultimately, we want to strive for more positive interactions than you know perceived negative ones so that's just something to keep in mind and ultimately in the in the book happiness advantage uh, the author talks about how happy ceos are more likely to lead teams of employees who are both happy and healthy so in essence a healthy team starts with healthy leaders mm. you know i love there's a quote from remember the titan there's a quote in there where the two team captains are in a bit of a an argument and one of them says to the other attitude reflects leadership and so when you think about you know that reminder that at the attitude of our teammates might reflect our own leadership and ultimately what is leadership it, leadership is influence so think about how you're influencing others in your in your circle there is this incredible woman again st sticking with the sports theme today she's the ceo of the dallas mavericks that's basketball in case you didn't know <laughs> <laughs> but her name's sent marshall she is phenomenal she has this great book called chosen I highly recommend it it's a wonderful read but she was specifically brought in to be the ceo of the dallas mavericks because they had a culture problem there were just this great challenges they were running to with their work culture. Um, she was identified as someone who could positively shift the culture. And I don't know if you've ever tried to be a single person um, in charge of so many people, but it's amazing if, if you're able to have that level of impact. And so that says a lot about you know the level of influence that you can have to completely shift the culture of an organization. And she's done it. I mean, she's phenomenal. But again, that's another story you can go check out if you're curious. So I think I'll leave there with all of my sports reporting for the day. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, there were some nuggets in there that were um, interesting and encouraging. Yeah, man, that's so good. It's, it's easy to miss the value of this topic because it seems so simple. It seems like surely it can't have that size of an impact, that much of an impact, but it's it's kind of phenomenal how impactful something like this can be to a person's performance, but also their well-being. Performance, you think about the, the baseball story we let out with, but also just think about how that feels as that person. Think about, you know, the the impact on him as a player, but also just the the day to day life that he's living. You know, uh, walking around as Trey felt different, probably on the other side yeah. of that kind of uh, getting out of that slump. And it started with this kind of positive attention that he wasn't in charge of himself completely. There are other people influencing him. So today, you know, I just want to encourage everybody listening, like if there's a way that you see an opportunity to positively affect, positively influence somebody you work with or somebody you live with, with some form mm -hmm. of positive attention, um, what, what, what might that look like? In fact, in the comments, share with us something that you can do that is a form of positive attention to someone else and, and let us know. And maybe there's something you can share that is something you've already done in the past. You've got a story you can share. We'd love to hear about that because obviously we're just sharing a few examples here in this video. So uh, take some time to share that down below and uh, be intentional as you go ahead in this week. Um, how can you apply and use positive attention just for your own well-being and, and better uh, well-being of those around you? That's what we've got for you today. Uh, we always appreciate you joining us and learning with us. So we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks.